Okay, we're back. We're live from EMC World. Uh, Pat Gelsinger's uh, playing in the background. Uh, we're here with Peter from Oxygen Cloud and uh, Pat. John, Pat Gelsinger was just you know setting up the stage, talking about you know the fundamental shifts in technology, how virtualization just changed everything. And Chad Sackage is up there now doing an SAP. Demo. Well, I mean, data, data as uh, gravity is something that we've been talking about in the cube. Obviously, we've been doing big data for a while, Hadoop, and doing stuff with social data. Gravity is really true, and I, I like his analogy of apps were bound to the infrastructure, and then now data is that whole nother level of innovation. So the old way was app-centric, now it's app and data-centric. So again, this disrupts, Peter, the whole cloud notion because the role of data is, is fundamental across the architecture because now data is not bound necessarily to the application, it's actually decoupled. And so how about that, Peter Chang? I mean, you, um, your value proposition as Oxygen Cloud is you know, get your data, it can be anywhere, and access it from any, any device. So, Talk about that a little bit and what you're seeing in the marketplace and what you guys are bringing. Yeah, so uh, I fully echo uh, what you said, uh, Mark, about how things are being uh, decoupled. Um, John, uh, the, um, the con you know, our approach to, uh, to making data available anywhere isn't to treat it as another application. Let's get another web portal, let's get another uh, desktop app in place, let's treat it as a infrastructure problem. So fundamentally, we have data that's stored inside IT or in wherever environments, but the users are not there anymore. How do they get to it? Instead of creating an app that you can, say a website that you can upload and download and get your data from, let's enable the infrastructure fundamentally. Let's make it the data itself, uh, the storage itself uh, mobile. So what we've done is virtualized, we created a virtualization layer around data that allows that data to uh, be stored in any location, public, private cloud, but accessed as if it's natively available on that local uh, machine, a virtual file system that wraps it all around. What's your vision on how that enables the agility message? Because we were just talking on the keynote, making notes here about agility. We're talking about uh, agile IT, but also on the service provider side. I see data and agility is the key. What's your vision on that? And what are the business benefits you're seeing around this new trend? Yeah, um, agility is, uh, I think, you know, traditionally agility is, uh, is talked about as uh, being able to move processing from one location to another. You know, let me fire up a VM in the cloud and I can have, uh, I can have uh, you know, burst into the cloud <laughs> capability. But a big sort of linchpin of that is you can move your processing into the cloud, but if your data is at home in a different location, you can't really do that much processing. You still have to move that data, and data is what's sort of uh, uh, impacting that agility. If we're able to liberate that data, if you're able to virtualize that data so that uh, it can be reconnected with any kind of computing, reconnected with any kind of application, uh, you can enable this true um, agile message that uh, Pat's so talking you, about. So figure out how to solve the speed of light problem? Is that kind of what you think? <laughs> That's next. That, yeah. We're close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, in a sense, you're coming up with a solution that, that addresses that fundamental problem, right, John? Yeah, I mean, so Pat's up there talking right now. You can see the theme, Dave, already emerging here at Pat's keynote is about the customer traction. So, again, go back to three years ago, and this is our two full years of the queue. We always said proof points is the key. So you're seeing the uh, Visa, you're seeing SAP examples. I'm sure you'll have a lot more customers. Peter, talk about some of the realities in the marketplace right now around the uh, deployment. So, rapid building, provisioning, the cycles of, of deployment by IT and or infrastructure is accelerating. So mm -hmm. what proof points are you seeing out there as well? Yeah, I think this cycle is just beginning. So we've sort of seen the on the consumer side, uh, this acceleration in terms of applications being created and lots of different varieties uh, of apps being uh, produced out by the market, but all focused on the consumer. I think that's that technology or those uh, lessons learned there are now being absorbed in IT. How do they take advantage of this more fluid infrastructure, of this uh, more fluid technology to create um, value-added applications that solve real enterprise problems? So what we're seeing is, is uh, companies, enterprises being very interested in this, but looking for answers, looking for help and how they can approach. Uh, so so he's bringing up concepts like rapid build provision, we just mentioned that he just brought up size of data, mm -hmm. petabyte scale, zettabytes around the corner, uh, and then he also mentions value what are you seeing in terms of the value proposition relative to these new architectures? Yeah, um, that's a, a very important uh, question. The infrastructure makes, makes things possible, right? So big data architecture might make it possible for you to be able to store and, and crunch a lot of data, but what you do with it, that's, that's what's next. That's where the value actually 
comes from, is how can you build on this infrastructure to create things that change people's lives? What are you seeing for customers out there in terms of like, whether their current needs are, obviously in public cloud, everyone talks about, oh yeah, non-critical, but at SAP last week, we were hearing some critical infrastructure, some core is moving to the cloud, so they bought success factors in the SAP environment. Now EMC's talking private, public, hybrid. What are you seeing in terms of the, the traction? What use cases are you seeing yeah. as most traction? Uh, the use case that we see uh, every day uh, are, are around, uh, around enterprises wanting to provide access to enterprise content in the cloud. So cloud-based devices like iPad, iPhones, remote uh, computers, they exist, they're already out there. The, the employees want access to information through those, uh, through those mediums. Um, so that's a real hotbed. How can you provide access to all this enterprise uh, content with the security, with the control that uh, enterprises absolutely need? So let me ask you a question more of on a startup, you're an entrepreneur, you're leading a company that's growing, and you know, you're navigating the waters of a highly volatile, massively growing marketplace that we're in right now. You know, we talk about the, the nascency of the, of the cloud and big data markets, really in the early, early days. As a startup, how do you navigate the surge of movement by these big whales like EMC. I mean, obviously they're laying out this massive value proposition. You've got VMware with their stack, it's filling in since VMworld 2010. IBM out there, HP kind of struggling a little bit, um, a little bit, but you know what I'm saying. But these big guys are making these moves. How do you navigate the waters? Um, these seismic changes these big whales are moving around. In? Yeah, it's, a, it's definitely a, a, a tough challenge. Um, the way I, I sort of approach it is that the need from the market exists and the market wants what the market wants. The big companies also want to provide what the market uh, wants but they don't necessarily have the, um, the technology or the uh, speed to deliver slow, uh, right? that. They're, they'll, yeah, you know, let's, let's face it, I mean, that's They're going for a big truth. chunk, yeah. Okay. Um, they're going after big giant pies mm -hmm. and they got, big, they got legacy customers, they can't move fast mm -hmm. enough, right? That's right. beauty of startups, right? So our strategy there is, is to be relevant, right? To provide the basic technologies, to provide the, uh, the approach that can build the early market. Uh, so towards that, and we have a big partnership with EMC, that's why we're at the, at the show. We provide uh, anywhere access to EMC storage, Isilon, uh, Atmos, uh, VNX. Um, so that provides that bridge to go to the next uh, next step. And of course, there I'm leveraging EMC's reach and EMC's. Yeah, their ecosystem. Uh, ecosystem. They're a thermal, so the marketplaces are always like thermals, right? right. You want to be underneath that and get sucked up yeah. into the growth, right? So you're going to try to position in there. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's our that's our strategy so, so far, so you, and, and it's been working. So out. you plug their storage into your grid. Yes. And then you discover it, you map it, and make it available to mobile devices or anything. Exactly, else, right? exactly. We we allow, we enable uh, EMC customers to use the EMC storage that they're familiar with, use that to solve their cloud uh, access and, and cloud um, storage problems without having to say, hey, let's give up, let's move to the public cloud, let's not uh, deal with this uh, anymore, which so obviously is not Because a lot of people would say, well, you know, people say this all the time to guys like EMC and, and NetApp, oh, mm -hmm. Facebook doesn't use your storage, you know, or you know, whomever, name a web company, they don't use that storage, you're in big yeah. trouble. What you're saying is, well, that may be true, and it is true, those guys don't use mm -hmm. a lot of if any you know, traditional legacy storage, but now you're, you're going to the enterprise saying, oh, what about you guys? You don't want to rip that out, mm -hmm. so you're giving them an alternative. Yeah. Um, do you see it as a bridge, or do you see the cost of that storage with your service coming down to the point where that actually can be competitive with with white box storage? In that you've got a lot of infrastructure that you have to put around it. You know the white box stuff. You got to have DevOps. You got to really be have rock stars who understand. Yeah. I mean, not everybody is Google and Facebook. Yeah. Not everybody has those types of engineers. How do you see that playing out? Yeah, I think the, it, the first thing to recognize there is that uh, the way a, a Google uses storage or uh, the way a, um, a eBay uses storage is different from how regular IT uses storage. They're using storage in massive scale for a very specific application with very specific needs. This is not generally the case in an IT environment where you've got a lot of other considerations. It's not one application, but many. Uh, and it's not, uh, uh, it's not uh, just about new data, but it's also about existing data. So it's more complicated. So cost, cost wise, uh, when you generally compare, you can look at cloud having an economy of, of scale, but that economy of scale really doesn't exist in the enterprise where there's so many different types of applications uh, in, you know, involved. Um, towards your point, Dave, I think it is a bridge. I think everybody is going to do, we're going to eventually be managing storage as a service. That I think is a foregone uh, conclusion. The question is, uh, what are the qualities of that service? Where does that data live? And how do you drive lower 
costs. And I think IT sto storage in the IT context, if you're aware of, if you can take advantage of that, uh, awareness of that, you could drive much lower overall costs uh, than using a public storage or white box storage. So talk about more about storage as a service. So you obviously bring the ability from a location, geolocation standpoint, and access and mobility, which is huge, mm -hmm. part of, of cloud and storage as a service. What about things like, you know, you think of you know, S3, I'm going to swipe the credit card, I'm going to pay as you go. Do you see that capability coming to organizations? I mean, we just did a survey and, and still, the vast majority of organizations have no chargeback, or if they have chargeback, it's like we have one bill that we just sort of lump into the admin costs, mm -hmm. you know, the overhead costs. Mm -hmm. um, how important are things like chargebacks and pay as you go and to really succeed for, for the enterprise, for, for enterprises to succeed at that cloud model? Yeah, I think the um, it, it, it's not one thing. Uh, Clearly the ability to be able to uh, provision storage or resources to your users uh, very fast. And uh, on that end, uh, Atmos, uh, EMC Atmos does a great job uh, of providing a cloud-based infrastructure that you can deploy internally in-house and uh, roll out to, to your users. That part uh, is definitely uh, important. Uh, but it's really, but it's not just, we're not just providing storage uh, to end users, because what are you going to do with that? There's nothing you, you know, end user doesn't, you know, give an end user uh, S3 storage. What are they going to do with that? There's right. nothing to do with that. Um, so it's really about how you take that infrastructure and marry it uh, to what John was talking about earlier. The value at the application is sitting on top of all this infrastructure to make it more valuable. And that's the build out, that's the boom that I think we're beginning uh, to, that in a couple years from now you're going to see uh, uh, a, a, uh, many, many more applications sitting on top of cloud approaches uh, to infrastructure. Yeah, we were at Sapphire last week, guess it be Sapphire, and this is our third year at Sapphire. And last year you started to see um, executives carrying around iPads. Bill McDermott talked about how he mm -hmm. purchased 3,000 iPads. Steve Jobs called him up and said, you know, buy some Why? Cool. What are you doing with this? And that was very cool. Um, Oliver Busman, the CIO, runs around with an iPad. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. So SAP is really enabling. Now, when you really peel the skin, what you find is it's a lot of, you know, travel and expen expense reporting. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Um, but it's not the you know sort of iTunes-like experience just yet. Mm -hmm. That's maybe where they're going. Mm -hmm. um, do you see that as where the enterprise will go, and and, and what role do you play in that? Yeah, uh, definitely the uh, the iPad, and we we uh, also uh, hear this uh, a lot. Um, we have customers that you know it's routine now to hear about a thousand iPad deployments centrally pushed out to uh, to end users here and also uh, internationally. Uh, there's no doubt that the um, the sexy, sexiness of the iPad, the use case of being able to travel light and get the information you need, is very very uh, attractive. Um, and that's the entry point, but that will be the entry point that I think brings on a much more fundamental uh, change um, for the enterprise, for uh, for end users. As it becomes accepted, as the infrastructure push, pushes in, um, things will change. And we're certainly, Oxygen is certainly riding that uh, that boom to, to support the iPad access uh, question, but in that process, put in infrastructure that allows storage to be uh, uh, much more efficiently uh, accessed and managed, uh, allow end users to do more than just, hey, I can get my file uh, while I'm on the road. Um, our vision is to build out a complete platform that not only provides access to uh, content that you put into the system, but co access to all content in the enterprise, and then and then taking advantage of that uh, data set to be able to provide value added uh, services and applications to directly to end users. So you're trying to be much more than an S3 competitor. I mean, Absolutely. Obviously there are guys out there that are front-ending S3, mm -hmm. bringing in services. How do you compete with those guys? So um, we, uh, we're definitely not in the cloud storage business uh, in the sense that we don't sell cloud storage. That's not uh, what we're about. We're that middleware layer that sits between the user and the cloud storage to make all of that uh, infrastructure or that capacity much more uh, useful. So we're much more interested in how uh, we can uh, enable new things, right? New applications uh, on top of all of this. And our key focus that may be different from uh, competitors is we don't think of ourselves as an application. We think of ourselves as part of the infrastructure. So we're building from the bottom up to enable new classes of, of data applications, big data uh, applications. And I think 
that trend is going to give us an advantage, and we already have uh, many exciting things that are in the labs uh, right now that uh, we'll be seeing in the next six months. Uh, we'll be announcing in the next six months that will demonstrate uh, this uh, point about how you can drive a lot more value with applications on top of this infrastructure. What's your um, what's your channel model? How do you how do you go to market? Well, today we're we're focused on the enterprise market. Um, Oxygen, uh, since inception, uh, has always been uh, in the enterprise uh, market. That's my background. It's so is it direct sales, or how, how do you go to market? Mm -hmm. I mean, is it a channel, is it, does it go through EMC, for it, example? It's, uh, it is a, uh, today we uh, have a channel-driven uh, strategy uh, through EMC uh, and other uh, distributors um, who already have the user base, are seeing the problems uh, around storage and how do you get access to the storage, and we provide that that, that glue, that application, or that infrastructure piece that makes that possible. Okay, so they're selling a solution, and you get a license fee off of that. Is that how it works? Or? Sometimes. Uh, sometimes it's a lead referral uh, type of uh, notion. Uh, other times it's a joint uh, development, joint solution uh, development. Uh, there are a lot. There is a lot of interest. Uh, we have major discussions uh, with uh, EMC and, and all the other players uh, that are out there. This is an extremely hot, uh, uh, hot area, um, and I think everybody is trying to figure out how does it all fit together. Um, and uh, that's what's exciting, right? Is at the end of the day, when the chips uh, settle, who is going to be who are who's going to be around? Who's going to be uh, relevant? And Oxygen is aiming to be uh, the player that's relevant. Well, and so, you're not threatening to. Some of the traditional legacy guys, mm -hmm. whereas some of these, you know, new startups, you know, like for instance, John, we've had Scott Genero on from Nirvonix. Yeah. I mean, that's threatening to some of the legacy storage guys. Well, I think right? Nirvonix is one of those startups like Oxygen that's emerging, and Nirvonix in particular, Dave, has been doing really well with their recent wins at petabyte scale. And you know, we we're talking about you know comparing Dropbox, Box.net, and these emerging companies, and um, you know, Nirvonix has got massive petabyte deals, and you know, the scuttlebutt within Silicon Valley is, is that although Box has got all these thousands and thousands of customers, they just don't have a lot of petabytes under, under their roof, and only has two data centers. So there's a lot of debate about what really is the viability about the actual data in these infrastructures, and is it a software layer versus an actual cloud store? So that's why this whole platform as a service debate around race to zero is interesting. So on one hand, you got the bubble innovation around Box and Dropbox, and then you got the real kind of the meat and potatoes of Nirvana doing well, completely different metrics. So Box obviously valuation is dwarfing Nirvonics, so in the case of the market's valuing number of customers over actual petabytes. So it's an interesting conversation. Yeah, I mean, the, it, and it's, it's two different worlds, but they are related, you know, when you start evaluating them from a valuation standpoint, right? An enterprise customer, you know, looking for security, and I'm, I'm presuming you're, you're seeing this, right? If you're partnering yep, with EMC, you're looking for recoverability and data protection. Yeah. Um, do you feel, but, but John's making an interesting point, the, the, the market, whatever that is, you know, the VC market is valuing some of these consumer plays much, much higher mm -hmm. than the enterprise play. You see that a lot, you know, the B2C really starts out exploding and then the B2B actually, you know, it's where the real money slow is and steady is really Well, if someone the puts their credit card down and does some file sharing, like say in Box, which is their number yeah. one value proposition, um, that's interesting, it's got some stickiness to it, but you have upsell opportunities. So they're really valuing the future value of the company, and yeah. Nirvana is doing much more serious infrastructure around the petabyte and, scale. And as is Oxygen Cloud, presumably, with your with your partners, mm -hmm. is that right? Or, so do you see that being as as valuable a component as the market is big? Is it, you know, should you command? It's a tough know, choice, right? Do you go for the customers, do you go for the, the core infrastructure? Yeah, well for Oxygen, uh, it's, it's definitely about being relevant in the enterprise. Um, and, and there, it's not really about app or infrastructure, it's really about how do you drive value, right? Um, the box, uh, and, you know, Nirvonix and Box are very different. Uh, Nirvonix is, is definitely more infrastructure and provide a storage, uh, storage uh, layer, uh, whereas Box is really an application. More collaborative, um, more collaboration More collaborative, software. you know, higher, higher yeah. uh, up. Um, the, uh, They've uh, you know uh, gotten some uh, traction and certainly a lot of uh, funding, so I think that's what's exciting. But it's like you said, uh, there aren't these petabyte uh, announcements, right? They're not necessarily cloud storage uh, companies. I mean, so Box.net just opened a new data center in Vegas. Mm -hmm. They've only had one data center literally for the life of their company. So it's interesting. They're a cloud play, but now only have two data centers. Yeah, and they probably wouldn't measure themselves that way. I mean, it's definitely yeah. about end users and, and the number of end users. Uh, I think Box is a great example, Dave, of like a company that does something really well and sticks with it and establishes that marketplace with that. And they've done that on the collaborative side. We've had Whitney on here in theCUBE last year at EMC World. Yeah, obviously very focused, right? 
and that has, has its advantages. Um, well, like, it, it depends, right? How sticky really is it? They can have thousands of customers, but if they're actually not really using the, the application, you have a, the risk of being, I call it the nightclub effect. Well, like hot said, one day and not hot the next. It's like you said, they're valuing the future value of the company, and they've got this freemium model, and hopefully yeah. it'll be premium, but you, know, you guys are yeah. going completely differently, right? You're, getting, you're extracting value for every transaction. It's a transaction-based model. It's, uh, it, it is a, our uh, value is about the enterprise and what we enable, so we generally do enterprise site licenses. Yeah, you're not giving stuff away so. to see uh, what happens. No, uh, okay. where you know, the, the, the value, that, uh, the value uh, that, that we're creating isn't, well the, the valuation on Box is really a bet on this, right? It's everything is going to be in the public cloud and that uh, a web portal with synchronization is, is how everybody wants to access their data. That is quite, that is debatable, right? Um, and uh, I, it, from Oxygen's point of view, uh, we think that the cloud is um, everywhere. It's What's the key trend that's driving your business right now? I mean, as the CEO, you've got to navigate all those yeah. issues, growing and building a company, uh, product strategy, making sure you're in the right shape. What's the one thing within your company that's unique to Oxygen that's got in the DNA of your company? And two, what's that key trend that's driving your business? Yeah, um, the key sort of, the way, the, the key DNA that makes us different from everybody else uh, is our approach as infrastructure. So we're not thinking about an application, we're thinking about how do we enable the fundamental storage to support these types of, uh, of new applications. Um, so, Big difference, what we our value to the market today is that we don't require you to upload all your data to the cloud just to get access. We don't require you to give up control. Uh, we have a, a solution that says you've got storage, you know how to manage it, and you've already paid for it. Why not use that uh, storage, that infrastructure, to support cloud access? You don't have to just throw up your hands and give your data up to the cloud. And the key trend driving your business? Um, control over data. I virtualization? Mean, the the uh, enterprises uh, want to offer these uh, virtualized services. So data liberation. Data, data liberalization. Freedom of data, liberating the data as a control point for apps. Right, it's, it's freedom for their employees to access their data, but while still maintaining full control of that data. And you mentioned so enterprise data. credibility and relevance, right? So that's mm -hmm. going to be around compliance, protection. Yes, there, there are a whole series of, of discussions. Um, you know, selling to a single uh, end user, it's really about this application, um, does it do the one use case that, that uh, I needed to do? Uh, usually share files, sure. But if you're selling to the enterprise, they have a lot more considerations. There's a lot of questions. You know, how do they pick this as the as the approach for uh, you know uh, going into the future? And that's where we really excel at is creating that enterprise class uh, service uh, for uh, for the market. Peter, thanks for coming on and um, expanding the conversation. We're going to take a quick break here on the cube. Take a, get a coffee. Um, we're going to go right back to Pat Gelsinger's keynote, and uh, we'll be right back with more commentary. Uh, here inside theCUBE, SiliconANGLE.TV's coverage of EMC World 2012, which kicks off their, their agenda for this year. So we'll be right back.